Hey, and welcome back to the channel. Yes, I am adorned from head to toe in Formula One. This weekend is the Miami Grand Prix. It's the second annual one. The one last year was excellent. I'm looking forward to it. And of course, go Sergio Perez. I think he's gonna win it again. I think for Formula One, this would be fantastic if there was a competition between Max Verstappen and Sergio Perez. Same engine, same machine, battling it out. I'm, I'm super excited. All right, so we're back with Project Pepper. Pepper is my 2002 Porsche 911 Carrera Cabriolet. For those of you just joining me, welcome. I had this engine bored out last year to a four liter and I had it re-sleeved with Nikki's from LN Engineering. On top of that, I put an IMS bearing solution from Flat Six Innovations. And now we're here working on the interior again. And right here before me are a couple examples of what we're gonna be working on today. A lot of plastic trim. We're talking a 20 year old car here, right? 21 years old now. And a lot of stuff is broken. Plus this car was in an accident. So there's this piece right here, which is very expensive. And for the cabriolet owners out there, hey, welcome man, I love cabriolets. I got two of them. And this is what covers the roll up bars and it broke off in that accident that the previous, previous owner have. So I got a lot of things to cover. Also, I wanna take care of the aero underneath the car. All of the belly panels have been taken off because I had to repair the rust, which is another great video series. I hope you guys check that out as well. I had to cut out the floorboard on the passenger side and weld in a donor piece and then put all the rubberized undercoating back on, which is what we're gonna talk about as well today. So a lot of things going on. It's not a marathon video like last week's, but it's about 30 minutes of fun. Let's take care of Pepper. Let's fix it. All right, it's time for the big test. I need to test to make sure that water does not get into the cabin after I fixed all the issues with the convertible top. So I've got a couple cameras running in there on the drains. I'm gonna run some hose. Let's see what happens. Let's do it. Nope, it's leaking right there. All right, so this thing is not watertight. Only on the driver's side, it looks like water got in. Okay, it looks like the problem is the drain is not draining fast enough. You saw in the video how this thing puddled up really quickly and then it took a little while to drain down. I got some more unplugging to do, but I'm gonna clean all this up because I gotta dye this and get it ready for um, the next step, the coloring this thing. But I wanted to test this out. It's a good thing I did. I can work on that. All right, this is gonna be a topic here that I think a lot of you guys are gonna be, um, that you're gonna find helpful. And this obviously, 
it is what you think it is. This is a glove box out of pepper. And yes, the clips broke off the rams. The rams, one of them was damaged, the other one was not. So I got two new ones. And, uh, but I had to get new clips because they're just so fragile. And uh, for, the, for, for those of you guys who don't know what that part number is, here's the part number for the air damper. And you notice it's a one-way trip. It goes in, clips in, boom, you're done. All right, let's take care of it. All right, luckily for me, uh, mine were pretty brittle. Yours should be too. So you don't have to go in from behind to pinch it out. If you give it a little, a little tug here, it's so brittle, it'll just fall apart. See? I heard it fly off somewhere over there. And there you go, right? So you just pop these in. And I advise you to do it um, hook facing outwards so that it hooks in this way and you keep this side of the ram facing out so that you don't look at that, right? All right, so I'm going to hook all this back up. Let me show you what it, how easy it is to pop this thing in. So you'll immediately know that there's um, a little tab sticking out right there. And that coincides with the slot open right there. So again, the hook is facing out. Drop it right in there. And it'll just clip and spin. And this thing is flexing. It can handle probably another 20 years of terrible Florida weather. Luckily, I don't live in Florida, but this car ever goes back to Florida. I hope it doesn't. But if it does, it'll be ready to go. And it's just as simple as closing this thing up. Lining it up. Get it. All right. It should just pop in at kind of almost in an upward angle. And there you go. Ready to go back in. Oh, and yes, I did clean that stain there. You didn't think I was going to put that back in there like that, did you? Come on. Okay, so we're back in. It looks really good. It's a little low on this side. But honestly, everything's kind of crooked in this car. And comparing it to my other car, it looks like it's pretty common for the 996s to have this kind of movement or unevenness. Hey, man, it was the early, early 2000s, late 90s. There's some screws here, and then there's screws here, but I am using um, these push rivets on the corners and a screw in the middle because that's all that's left in there is an opening. And I think push rivets are perfect for this because if you ever need to open it again, come right out, be good to go. But it opens and closes perfectly, just like new. All right, I'm gonna check that off the list. All right, let's check this one off. Whoop. Glove box. All right, so we've got dome light. I had to reorder that again. Porsche sent me the wrong piece. No big deal. Um, underbelly covers. I'm going to do that next, but at first what I need to do is spray the underside with this. I'm going to use the... Um, Permatex heavy duty rubberized undercoating just to kind of replace the undercoating that I had to grind off when I replaced and repaired the rust on the passenger side. This is the last piece of the puzzle. I get this on, then I can put the, the aero panels back on, and that's a wrap on the underbelly. All right, I'm, I'm gonna sound like Darth Vader. So hopefully this comes out in the video, but here we are again. This is my masterpiece. Uh, if you guys remember, if you, if you don't, get caught up with this whole floorboard here. The gray primer color here is pretty much the perimeter of everything that I cut out, almost. So what I want to do is I want to cover that up, recover it back up with rubberized undercoating. Unfortunately, it's not in gray, so it's going to kind of stand out, but it's going to look better than it does now, I think. At least in general, or in theory. But uh, here we go. I'm gonna try to do this without getting all dirty. But I got a mask on because I don't want this stuff in my lungs. I take my health pretty seriously since I'm recovering from COVID. All right, let's do this. All right, here's a few drops of it. And you gotta watch it because it's gonna drip. It also bubbles up pretty good because I think it, it's causing a chemical reaction to start the rubberizing 
process. So try not to get that crap on you. I don't know how you're not supposed to when you're under a car. But I'm off to the side. And uh, so I'm going to keep on doing it. But uh, I've got a towel down to keep my awesome floors taken care of. But uh, yeah, so I'm just going to kind of outline where the welds are at. And just see what it looks like as best I can. Okay. It's coming along. When it dries, it won't be as shiny. But again, this is going to protect everything. Not ideal, but unfortunately, I can't find that gray anywhere. But it's better than rust. Okay, it's been a long time coming, but I finally got all the underbelly panels in place, secured, got new rivets all the way down, and then I got two more. I got this one that goes across, and I haven't seen very many cars have this. And then this one off the side here, which can, is protecting all of the connectors here on the fuel lines and the... Um, windshield wiper lines, all of the little fittings are under, underneath here and that's now protected, so that's good. But I've got one more panel it looks like I need to get because it attaches here and I think it's just like a little heat shield or something that goes across here and I want it to be complete because I want it to look really good. But let's take a look at it from this direction and note how awesome that looks. Okay, well, let me get the rest on and start ordering more parts. All right, I'm continuing on with the final pieces of trim here on the outside. And some of these things are important, for example, like the splash guard here. Uh, but the ones that came with the car when I bought it, like everybody else's, they're pretty beat up. This one's not too bad. But this one, on the other hand, is uh, pretty cooked. It's broken there on the corner. I suppose I could have fixed that, but uh, not sure if that would be a good idea because it's just really beat up. So I went ahead and got two new ones. And then on top of that, you notice that there's three holes, four holes there. Well, that's where these go. And this is sort of part of, you know, the reason why it's on there is to deflect the water or wind away from this area. So I'm going to replace all of that. And then we're getting really close to finishing a lot of the cosmetic stuff because, uh, you know, the box is almost empty. All right, there we go. It's installed. Brand new little lip there as well. Everything looks good. I got all the screws in. So now I can put the liners back in and this is going to be almost a complete vehicle. <laughs> Unbelievable. All right, so I got to get the nose off of this car again. And I'll show it to you guys as well, the condition of it. So this thing's going to be resprayed, but overall, this thing's going to get wrapped anyway. So, But it's got some imperfections in it, some bumps and things. I'm hoping the body shop can knock all that out or skim coat it or tell me that this thing is dead and I should replace it. Either way, I'm hoping I can keep it. So what I got to do now is I got to get the intake... Uh, channel, intake channel, intake, whatever. Here on the other side, it's here as well, you can see. But hopefully you can also see that it's been oversprayed. This side, I'm okay with the overspray part of it. And there's a grommet missing. There's a grommet missing there too, I'll have to replace. But um, yeah, so I gotta put this one in and then I'm gonna get rid of all that shiny silver because it's not supposed to look like that. And then we'll let the body shop handle the rest. All right, let's knock this out. All right, so as you can see, the scoop, the air scoop here is completely missing. I showed it to you a moment ago. It was oversprayed and completely just cracked and destroyed. There's really no point of reusing it. This here is just really freaking annoying. You know, I, I'm, I think I'm just going to come in here and uh, hit it with a sandpaper and just sand it all down so that it shows black again. You, you auto body guys out there, please tell me this isn't standard operating procedures to do such a poor job. Whether or not it's a Porsche or a Kia, take some pride in your work, man. Am I right? All right, so let's get the other one on. 
All right, easy peasy, man. Couple, uh, five bolts or so, six bolts. Nice and snug, super flexible. This thing will last the rest of this car's life. I'm gonna leave those tags on there just so that the next owner knows that Yogi's Garage did this for them. All right, let's fix that dirty ass one over there. All right, I'm gonna be using my awesome little Milwaukee Orbital Sander. Did a great job on doing the plastic painting and trim and things like that. I got the little spongy part on it too, so that it gives me a little bit more flexibility on the curves. So again, I just wanna hit this just to get it back to black because uh, you know clearly this does not look right. All right. <laughs> All right, let's see what it looks like when I'm done. And there, okay, it's not perfect, but it doesn't have to be. I sanded it down with 80 grit and then I came back with 180 so it didn't look as coarse. So it looks really good. The only part you're really gonna see is right here. I'm not gonna waste my time on the wires. If it looks tacky, I'll come back and, and uh, fix it. But uh, yes, I went ahead and took care of that, put some of this awesome uh, bare bones dark shine undercarriage from chemical guys on there and it made it look really good and up here I cleaned this up area. This whole shelf here was really dirty and grimy uh, Used uh, my horse hair brush went in there and cleaned it up made it look More decent. All right. Let's see what the bumper liner looks like. Okay, so this bumper liner has seen better days It's been in an accident or they got it from a junkyard because the original one was damaged. I don't know the bottom line is you can see that it's missing some components here. This little skid or arrow component, I got a replacement for that one. It should look like this, right? But this one's not in bad shape. So I'm gonna go ahead and just, um, I'm gonna keep this one, I'm gonna replace the other one. But if you look on the inside here, you can see just how terrible it is. It's really quite simple. All you would have had to do was take off the plastic trim around the openings and all you would have had left was the paintable surface. But instead, they used some janky masking tape to just cover up as much as possible and then just spray the hell out of it. And this is the result. So I don't do things like that in Yogi's Garage. I'll never do this in Yogi's Garage. Uh, I won't stand for it. I'll try to correct it as best I can. It's got to be cost effective, which is why I decided not to have pepper painted, but rather wrapped. But this nose cone has to be resolved. There's a lot of little things here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tackle what I can, try to make it look as good as possible. And then when we get to the point where we're doing paint correction and then the actual liner or the the wrap then i'll come back and we'll we'll figure out what we're gonna do here what i'd like to do is take the bumper liner off of this one and see if it fits on the front of the carrera and if it does then maybe i can swap it out for a turbo nose cone now uh, I know there's some things you got to probably do to get it to fit perfectly, but those things are not cheap either. So, uh, uh, you know, one from the junkyard, you're still looking at 2,500 bucks or something. So I don't know. We'll see. I think once I clean all this up and we get the wrap on it, I think it's going to look a lot better. And, uh, and then we can send it, man. So remember how easy I told you it was to get that out? Let me just show you. There's just little tabs all the way around. And once you get all the tabs out, look at this. Hey, look. It comes completely out. So you don't have to mask it off, you bozo. Look at this. Easy peasy, man. All right, I'm going to clean this up. All right, and there. I'm going to stay far back so that you don't see all the blemishes on the nose of that bumper. But what I want to show you is that there's no more tape. There's no more black or silver paint. That's all been taken off and put back on clean. Simple process, as I showed you. Just pop those off, 
take it off, clean it, paint your bumper liner, and then put it back on. See how easy that is? It's been about a week since I started this project. I got COVID, so I had to pause, but I still managed to get quite a few uh, sprays of black onto this thing. But quite honestly, I think this is as good as I'm gonna get it. Uh, Yogi Mama had made a great point. We can call it the 50 shades of gray interior, which is pretty accurate because I see some shades of gray and green in that area and teal. But when you think about it, this is going in the back seat. And, you know, no one's really going to be sitting back there. Appearance-wise, we're going to have seats on there. I'm not making excuses. This was a very difficult project. Would I recommend doing this in the future? Probably not. But is it cheaper than going out and buying a donor piece? Absolutely. This probably right here would have... I If, if I would have had a piece like this, I would have charged $500 for it. The fragment that I got for the car already inside uh, for the floor, I think I paid 400 for. And this one's a molded piece, very unique. I would charge that much. So this is, was our only option to stay within some kind of budget. But the goal is now is to get this in, get the side cards in, get the speakers in, and start finishing up the interior. So let's do it. All right, so I gotta get this cowl off. There's a couple of things you need to do. You gotta take the wiper arms off. You gotta make sure that you have the right version. I ordered my original one from Pelican Parts and they, I looked at it, put it on the car, said, yep, that is a cowl. I didn't go any further until I was ready to replace it. And when I went to replace it, come to find out that that was a cowl for a right-hand drive car. So it's not going to work in the United States. Not even sure how Pelican Parts managed to get a European part and sell it to their U.S. customers. Not sure. Anyway, I got the original from Porsche now. So that's ready to go. New seal up here as well. So it's going to be nice and brand new. But I got to take it out. And then I got to take out some of the add-on components like the spray heads and any tubing or anything like that underneath and transfer it over to the new one. But first things first, let's take this off. There's a couple of fasteners here in the front, one right there below the arm. And then we gotta take the arms off, no big deal. It comes right out, let's do it. All right, so I got the cowl out now, and it may not look beat up, but that's because I used the tire and trim renewer from Chemical Guys, which looks great, by the way. But it's broken. You know, there are certain things underneath here that are broken off. The tabs right there are broken off. I <clears throat> can't find the uh, pieces, so I can't put them back together. But these things are meant to be replaced. You know, they're exposed to the sun. You can see that this rubber gasket is about had it. Even if I would have put a new one without a rubber gasket in there, it would have still leaked into the frunk. So uh, this needed to be replaced as part of water sealing the, this 911. All right, so you can see that I've got some wiring here that needs to come out. This tubing needs to be swapped over to the new one, which is sitting right there. Let's start it up. All right, and these are the only transferable pieces that are gonna go to the other, the other one. I threw away the gasket. Here it is right here, this trash. And um, so these are the spray heads. The wiring looks good, the tubing looks good. So I just gotta transfer it over. Let's do it, man. All right, I wanted to pause for a second and uh, show you what the gasket or the weather stripping should look like brand new, right? And then here is the one that came off of the old cowl. You see how old it is and raggedy. And then this one here, nice and supple, almost like a baby's bottom. Look at that, brand spanking new. All right, man, this thing's gonna be great. All right, that's done. That took a little longer than I hoped it would. It's kind of a pain in the butt because there's a, a upper lip and a lower lip and you got to kind of get them in between and you got to mash them in because it just wants to roll out if you don't do it right. And I'm still not completely convinced that it won't roll out. So we'll see. Something like that. You just got to get it in there. All right, let's put it in. All right, now that I've got it uh, rough fitted in, everything looks good 
all the wiring and tubing is gonna line up just fine. One of the things that they did, Porsche, thankfully, is to give us a little excess on each end. So you don't need to center it or any of that crap. Just get it on there with enough slack on each side and then come back in at an angle with your scissors and just snip right there. All right, now that the cowl is back on, you, got, you can't forget your cap. So this is the area that was broken off on the old one, but the caps were still good. And the caps are a third order for this. So when you order a new cowl, if you need new caps, make sure you do the cowl, the weather stripping, and the caps. And that's it. One of the things that seems to be always missing in these cars, and I know this because I own two of them, is uh, this little spot right here that attaches your trim pieces to the car. The one that covers the battery attaches here and it holds everything in place, but it flops around all over the place unless you have these right here. And these are the parts that fit in there, but they oxidize and they break off. There's just one over there and I'll show you that in a second. But they fit right in there and use a metal screw. And my guess is that since because it's a screw and not just a quick release, they get taken off and misplaced and then never put back in. So that's my guess. But since this car is being a partial restore, let me fix this. Yeah, since, since this car is going to be a partial restore, then that needs to be taken care of because I want this car to look tight. Here we go. All right, should be a pretty simple process. Just drop this right into the hole just like that. And it sits in there. And the other one, this one's old and had been here a while. And look, see, it's already broken off. So it wasn't really attaching to anything. Look at that. That's just junk. All right, let's get this last one in. Okay, I think I figured out the purpose of this. It's not really meant to really hold it in place too tight because obviously this comes off for servicing. But when you do thread it in, it tends to compress because it's not fully threaded, that uh, grommet. It's only threaded near the bottom. So when you pull it in, it compresses it, thus opening it up and holding it in place. And I think what's happening is that people tend to spin these off and then use a pry to get them off completely and it ends up ripping the rubber, so be careful. And then here's where I said that the battery quick release is. So you can see it's not like wicked tight, but it doesn't have to be. It's holding it in place. Everything's looking good. All right, let's do the next one. Okay, we're just gonna tighten, just gonna tighten this up. I'm pushing down on it, so I create a little bit of friction. Yeah, and see? You may not think you're doing anything, but you are, all right? If you want to go a little bit tighter, you, you can. But the more you compress it, the more it's going to squeeze. And um, I think over time, it's going to end up damaging it, hence the reason why I'm replacing these. All right, so just be careful. They're not meant to be wicked tight, but look at that. Nice and tight. All right, let's button all this up and see what it looks like complete. Getting ready to wrap up the interior of this car. I still have a few things I need to do. I'm waiting for the seat belts to come back from the repair shop. Then I can put the seat belts back in and uh, complete the install of the cards. But what I also need to do is take care of this exposed area. And there's two parts. This part right here that goes across that mask the pop-up bars. That broke off on Pepper, but I got a new one from Porsche. So I want to put it on, but I'm going to need to put the car into the service position, the top, so that I can get access to the back of this because it bolts into the back and it goes in here as well. So, and I believe like this screw here and that screw over there are part of the assembly. So let me go ahead and do that. So putting your top into service position is pretty straightforward. It's basically this. You put it in the upright where it's being held firmly. That way you can get access to the back here. Lift this up and pull up the carpeting 
that's also back here. All right, this here is the assembly. And this faces the rear of the car. And you can see the mount points here. They look like they're push rivets and then maybe one mountable screw and then two screws here, one and the other one here is where I took it off. Let's go ahead and put this in place and see what it looks like. Okay, this is the rough fit meant right now. There's covers that go here, obviously, but they're not gonna go on right now. I just wanna get everything kind of fitted in. And part of this carpeting tucks in underneath and the other part kind of sticks out in the back. But there's a mount point further down that I need to do first. And this is why I needed to take the uh, top and put it into service position. So to lift this top up beyond its, its height, you can see it stops right there. There's a, a ball tether that's right under here that has to be taken out. And like everything else, I need two hands for that. So you can see now that it's in the service position and the, the back window is up and being held by my torque wrench, you can see the push rivets go right there. There's one major attachment point that goes right there. I went ahead and took the cover back off so I can get access to this. One screw that was already in place. It looks like it's already loose. So now I can put it back on. So I got my hands on a box of assorted push rivets. And I'm going to put a link in my affiliate section of my description below so that you guys can uh, know what I'm using. But these things are great. They come in different sizes. They're meant for doing just this, pushing in those rivets. A lot of times these are used on wheel liners, but they're also used, obviously, in the back. So I'm going to knock this out. And it's pretty simple. Once it's in place, you push the pin in, and it locks it in place. I love it. All right, we're just going to push it in. There. That's all there is to it. And once you push these in, when they pop out, it should swing up. It shouldn't break. Mine did not break on the other one. All right, this here is the original one that came with the car when I bought it. And you're probably wondering, well, it looks good. Why didn't you reuse it? Well, it's because the entire back portion that I showed you, the black part right here, is completely broken off and it did not come with the car. So the good news is, is that I can take these caps off and I think they may be worth a little bit of money. But the reason why I'm showing you this is because there's always something valuable on old parts especially body panel parts or any type of trim that you could use. So I hardly throw anything away. I always find a use for it. And like, for example, these caps here, you can see that they crack. These things get a lot of sun and you can see it's already falling apart. Just picking it up. Look at that. It's so brittle. But, you know, I'm a plastic welder now, so I can always weld it back together if it's worth it. But I guarantee you that this sold by Porsche is probably going to be worth 5 or $6. So, you know, might as well keep it. All right, let's replace that thing. Yeah, I don't really know why I thought that these would be any different. They're just as brittle as the ones that I took out. See? I mean, I barely even squeezed that. All right, looks like I'm going to have to order a part. Here I was bragging. It's like, hey, man, I'm going to save you some money. Nope. But I think I'll take this one. For now wow this looks really good all right i got the screen in it's covering up most of the interior which i like there's a few little pieces left that i need to do got to replace one of the speaker grills and a few little things that are still bothering me like these side cards are pretty messed up right there you can see the cuts and of course the the e-brake that's like my symbol for janky Porsche compared to one-of-a-kind Porsche, right? I mean, but I think I did it justice. I think it looks really good. It's certainly ready for cars and cars. All right, guys, I hope you guys really enjoyed and got something out of that video. It, uh, in case you didn't notice, there was some time jumping going on. A lot of the interior parts have already been put on this car. But as I mentioned in the video, my wife and I came down with COVID, so all of the parts got jumbled together. But it's basically where I'm at right now. I have a few things left to do with this car. Obviously, I'm still dealing with the P0452 error. I got my part in, but that's for the next video coming up. And I think I'm going to drop it in a few days. I'm not going to wait the full seven or eight days to drop the video. I'm going to drop it probably this weekend. So for those of you guys having the P0452 check engine light, I got something for you. So with that, thanks for watching Yogi's Garage.
We'll see you next time.